Review, 2023 BMW M2 Tells Tales from the Dragon. Before I tap the red start button, before I press the lever tipped shift lever into first gear, before I stupidly dump coffee dregs in my lap as I prep for the tense half hour ahead, I say a little prayer. I'm about to grab the tail of the dragon, hallowed ground for sports car drivers, motorcyclists, or really anyone who wants to drive 11 miles through 318 turns without any mailboxes, without any driveways, without any interruptions other than the carpenter bee buzz of sport bikes tilting and whirling around 15 miles per hour carousel kinks while they lay nearly flat. I pray to the gods of grip. All I want to do is keep it safe, keep it shiny and stay out of sight of anything with a municipal crest on its doors. I'm probably already breaking the law before the first turn. I'm doing drag, after all, I'm basically cosplaying Little Red Riding Hood in a place where, even if the Trump signs have faded, the sentiment hasn't. Then I put it all out of my mind. The tail of the dragon isn't a time for distractions. It calls for wide eyes, radio-free ears, sharp reflexes, and the right blade with which to cut, which is why I grip the thick-rimmed steering wheel of BMW's latest M2 with a little extra force. It's up to the occasion, I want to be, too. It's a stiff-kneed long-distance tourer, but the BMW M2 comes into brilliant focus on roads like the tail of the dragon. BMW M2, a stiff-kneed long-distance tourer. After all, we anointed the last M2 Our Motor Authority best car to buy 2017. This one, as before, evolves the latest 2 Series Coupe into M status through horsepower, tuning, and bodywork. Once again, the M2's gotten bigger. Overall length has risen by 4.7 inches, track has widened by 1.5 inches in front and 1.6 inches at the rear, and the wheelbase has stretched by 2.1 inches. That makes it more livable. It doesn't make it a bit less lovable. The Appalachian Mountains puddle up at the horizon like a comforter on an unmade bed as I try to smooth out the road to get to the tail with the rear drive, turbo, 6M2 in its must-have manual shift configuration, what used to be the norm, now a bittersweet throwback. This one's a winner, mostly. It has rubbery detents in its shift action and in the clutch pedal action, too. It keeps perfectly smooth shifts a half step out of reach, but it's still better than what's possible on some rival sports cars, where they still exist. It's here on the interstate where the M2's at its least. It's a stiff-kneed long-distance tourer, and it drones too much on textured concrete pavement. The road noise generated by its massive Michelin Pilot Sport 4S summer tires, 275-35 ZR19 in front, 285-30 ZR20 in back, overwhelms the voice recognition of the infotainment system, it even mutes the silken twin-turbo inline, 6. That 3.0-liter inline, 6 posts up at 453 horsepower, some 48 horsepower more than its predecessor, and twists out 406 pound-foot of torque as it wins toward a 7,200 rpm redline. The tire noise can't damp the M2's gusto, Sneak down a gear and step into it, and it erases the distance to the next exit ramp. BMW claims a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 4.1 seconds, 3.9 seconds with the available automatic, and a top speed of 155 miles per hour, 177 miles per hour with the M driver's package. In its transformation to M2, the 2 Series gets a host of upgrades, from an active rear differential to a stiffer chassis, aluminum suspension pieces, adaptive dampers, and more finely tuned electric steering. It's almost too taut to daily. On one stretch of highway, the M2 pogoed rhythmically and couldn't be calmed, no damper setting was loose or firm enough to resolve it. Once it got to asphalt again, it settled down, but the slight wandering on center didn't, the M2 wants to bump steer with pavement blemishes thanks to those staggered wheels. Bigger, heavier, and more expensive, what's not to love about the latest BMW M2? It takes the right road to reveal its magic. BMW M2, grabbing the tail of the dragon. The M2 wasn't meant to thrive in that environment, anyway. It begs for roads like the tail, the only clue you need is the pair of red toggles on the steering wheel coded M1 and M2. 
Programmed by the driver, these presets can flick the car from one configured with more relaxed steering and throttle tip-in, to one that's on the correct side of frantically engaged. I leave it in a user-configurable M1 drive mode as I make a left turn and trundle through a dozen miles of small town North Carolina, before the road interferences drop out of sight, along with cell phone signal. Even slack goes slack. It's the perfect time for M2, the other user set switch and the car, naturally. In an instant, I'm in the middle of a Foreman early match with the S's, duking it out with very slim runoffs and tangoing with a line of Myatas, motorcycles, and assorted Broncos, all parading by cameraman from Killboy.com who rests safely in the corners to take shots of cars flying through the ever tighter corners. It's a scene, every corkscrewy bend in the road has been bejeweled with candy-colored Camaros and Corvettes and 50 shades of German car grey. My eyeballs start to slosh around like pickles in a barrel and my gut starts to swish in rhythm with them as the M2 gets into its groove, tracing the steps taken by a yellow clapped out master protégé. Sport bikes slip by ever so closely in the oncoming lane, followed occasionally by a Bronco or, worse, by a big crossover filled with gawkers who quickly get paralyzed by fear, like a straight bro stumbling into his first gay bar, unwittingly or otherwise. Its weight gets spread around nearly equally, a 50-50th split, but the M2 is a thick one at 3,814 pounds with the manual. A stomp on the gas obliterates most of the leaden feel it can have at low throttle, as pure power lifts the M2 out of its commuter speed doldrums. It's a second gear wrapper's delight, and I leave it in rev matching mode for the odd upshift downshift into third and back because the pedal array proves challenging for my size 12 EE feet. Not only does the tip of my left shoe get caught in the toe box when I declutch, the height between brake and gas doesn't sit at a friendly distance for heel and toe shifting. Braking barely begs a question, it just stops, and stops hard, thanks to huge 6-piston calipers and 15.0-inch rotors in front and single-piston calipers with 14.6-inch rotors at the back. The calipers are blue, peeking out from inside those staggered wheels, 9.5 inches across in front, by the way, and 10.5 inches at the back. I reel off a hundred turns or more before I notice fatigue and before the veins start to stand out on my forearms. When I first got in the car, I didn't think the steering wheel needed to be as fat as it is, nor did I believe the steering needed to be as heavy as it is. The tail proved me at least a little wrong. Once I started to filter through the 15 miles per hour curves, chasing my own tail around them, the heft kept the wheel from getting chucked offline from the stray pothole or rock. The M2 has lost some of the lightness and precision of its steering, sure. But in exchange, it just sticks. It sticks it out longer than most drivers can. It's a murder hornet that eats up almost everything in sight. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.